I have never been to Australia, but today I have a special guest all the way from down under. Hello, Michelle. How are you? I am fabulous. Or should I say g'day, mate? How are you? Oh, g'day. Yeah, teach me some Australian. That'd be great. You guys have a fabulous sense of humour. We actually understand your sense of humour, which is good. So That's handy. Some, yeah, we're going to have some fun, Michelle. We're gonna have some fun. But actually, this is serious stuff now because um, I love to bring experts onto my podcast so I can learn. So I'm, I'm, I've got my notepad at the ready and I'm ready to learn because this is a subject I don't know anything about. So let's start back at the beginning here. Why company pages? A question that I get asked nearly every day. You're absolutely, it's the number one question that I get. And the answer is, uh, like I often say, why not? Uh, but the, the more less obvious answer is because at the moment, you know, the whole world's online, whether it's because of the pandemic, uh, working from home, lockdowns, restrictions on travel, everybody moved online. Now, if you're in the business of working with other businesses or other professionals, we know that LinkedIn is the number one platform. Now you're there to do business and a company page is a reflection of your brand and what you offer as far as your products and services that complement to your personal brand so quite often people say if I've got a company page am I actually here should I throw away my personal branding and then you've got the people that love personal branding saying company pages are a waste of time Michelle why bother and so what I'm saying is if you have both you can actually really leverage off both of them to build your profile out in the land of doing business so that's why I say you need one and if you're a small business starting out um, it's also a substitute for a mini website you know it's a really cheap and free way that we can actually get you out there, get you noticed. It's dynamic. It's ever changing. You can update it yourself. Um, and it's a cheap and easy way that you can start to build a presence if you're just starting out in whatever industry or what business that you have. So lots of reasons that everyone should have a company page. Wow, that's really brilliant. I love the fact that you say it's a reflection on your brand because I agree, of course it is. But I also like the fact that you're saying it's a mini website. And of course, we know that LinkedIn has really high domain authority. So in a way, you're actually putting your mini website about your company on, onto a platform that is likely, it's likely to show up, isn't it? First page for free, right? And this is what I say to people, LinkedIn results, whether your personal profile or your company page, if someone Googles your name, you will show up in probably the top couple of results on the first page. And people are paying thousands of dollars or pounds um, for that privilege. And you can do it really simply and easily on LinkedIn. So it's another advantage of having a company page is to get that first page result if someone goes looking for your company name. So yeah, you're right. It's an, an, an added bonus for having one. You know, I hadn't actually thought about it that way. So I'm now embarrassed because my company page is pretty poor. So, so, so should my company page have on it all the stuff I would put on my website? Is that what I should be putting in terms of content? Look, websites serve a purpose. You know, we set them up, we put a few blogs on there, a few testimonials, here's my products and services. And typically they get left alone for the next five years, unless you're someone that's heavily involved in either e-commerce or you're involved in, you know, spending lots of money on SEO optimization. If you don't fit into those categories, it's a set and forget. Now where a company page can come into it, it's more dynamic and a lot more fun. And it actually adjusts as you adjust. So as time goes on, you might have different different speaking events that you got coming up and you can promote those really easily. Uh, you might actually have videos or webinars that you've done or, you know, podcast recordings that you want to share or let people know to drive them across. And so there's so many different ways very easily and for free. Did I mention that at the beginning? Because everything I'm talking about today is, you know, I only use the free tools of LinkedIn. I don't um, suggest to people to even bother with a premium subscription you know you can do so much stuff and especially on company pages so make sure that you can show your personality show who you are as a person and a company has a personality as well company is just a group of people you know what makes you different and it can really help you attract good talent just as much as products and services being sold so it's often a place that we forget the absence of information is also a brand you know we know that we're all out there doing our stalking these days you know before we make any purchase we're all you know on TripAdvisor for hotels or restaurant reviews um, people are doing that for everybody's business not just those particular you know industries so yeah it's dynamic I enjoy it and it's more fun you know and that's what I'm, I'm here to change the perceptions of company pages that they're a bit stiff and 
you know, not much fun and have to be professional. Uh, you know, they don't have to be. They can literally just be you and who your business is and be human, you know, human to human. That's what we love, right? Absolutely. And you're definitely fun. So that's good. So that, that reflects that reflects that company pages, company pages must be fun. Okay, cool. So so I haven't got a company page. I actually have, but let's say I haven't. How long does it take to set up? Is it easy to do? Uh, absolutely. It is probably around 15 to 15 minutes to half an hour maximum. And that includes, you know, typing in about section, you know, I'm doing all, you know, if you did the whole thing. So it's not a arduous project. It's a, you know, pretty simple, just follow the instructions, check the boxes that LinkedIn will direct you. Um, and it's just, you know, mainly just putting in your contact information, making it really easy for people to understand what it is that you actually offer and who it is that you help. Don't forget to make it really obvious the kinds of people that you help, um, because that's, you know, ultimately what we want to do is become a magnet and attract those people and there's nothing worse than when you're putting out content and you're getting inquiries from the wrong places um you know it's about being smart to make sure that we get the right people coming your way yeah and what i love about linkedin of course it, it's a business platform isn't it it's so it is it is uh, people are going there because they do want to connect with professionals and it is it has a different feel it has a, i don't know uh, i don't do you agree it has a different feel i think it yeah does. you're in, you're in that frame of mind you know and it's not quite as as I said, corporate stuffy as what it was maybe five years ago, eight years ago when I first started. In the last 18 months, and I, you know, the pandemic absolutely changed the platform. We see lots more, you know, health and wellness coaches of, you know, a lot of industries that are not your white collar traditional LinkedIners, as I would call them. So we've seen a change in the platform. It's become a lot more casual. Um, it's a place for people to gather, and you're in the frame of mind. You know, when you go onto LinkedIn, you're not there in the same frame of mind as when you go onto Facebook or Instagram you're there for a different reason and often it's to be you know educated or looking for someone to solve a problem that you have within your business or as an individual so yeah it's great excellent excellent so you're not there to share your cat videos so i i and dog videos <laughs> i have okay. done that <laughs> yeah i've shared some dog videos too but anyway they've always had a, a business message behind them of course <laughs> yeah loosely mine too <laughs> Excellent. Um, so, I mean, this goes out to uh, speakers mainly, um, mm -hmm. and th these this is my audience, my other people that I, I work with. So if I'm a speaker and I, I'm a one man band, say, or a one mm. woman band, and, and what I do is speak, do I really need a company page? Look, it becomes a balance of time, resources, and you know what you've got going on. One of the reasons that I would say to people at a very minimum is set up a company page, even if you're a solopreneur or just a single individual that is the business, uh, set up a company page so that you can have your profile updated in your work experience to show that you're linked to your company. And it takes away the little gray ghost buildings and gives you your logo and makes you look a lot more professional. Because I know that even if people are looking for speakers they're looking to see are you trustworthy are you likable what experience do you have and any gaps on your profile will look like yeah what's going on here um you don't pay attention to detail you know and and so it creates perceptions just by having that missing so you can set it up as we said about half an hour maximum that you need um it doesn't matter if you're not posting content because you don't have time uh but it's a balance so that you can actually the thing that i love most is that even as a solopreneur, I get the same space in the company page as Google, as Unilever, as the biggest companies in the world. Same banner size, same headline, same number of words in, in content um, in my content. So we all get the same space for free. You know, find me another platform where we get to, you know, play for free against the big guys. Um, it's such a level playing field. And it can also make your speakers appear much bigger than what they are, you know. And sometimes, you know, that perception is equally as important in getting that next level speaking gig that they might be after. So you can create a lot of history around your company, where it's been, what you've done and what you've achieved um, more than just, hey, my profile says that I've done it. So it must be true. So, yeah. It yeah. can help absolutely. 
I like that. The professional thing is so important because it, it actually the bit that often is missing with speakers is they don't tell you what's the back history that makes me the expert. So you're absolutely right. And to take it to the next level. So everything that helps you be more professional. And I love this, you know, being on the same um, having the same opportunities as Google or Amazon yeah. Or, or yeah, I quite, I quite like that. You I don't have to pay to play, right? Yeah. Whether you've got 800,000 people or an employees or you're one, we're all paying the same zero to have the same amount of space. Like, and I can't find any other platform and please, you know, let us know if you've come up with something We, as an individual for business, you get that opportunity without having to pay for Facebook ads or Instagram ads or any of these other sites where, or SEO, even as we mentioned earlier, like you are paying enormous amounts of money to try and keep up with these companies. And it's a game that most solopreneurs, unless you've got very deep pockets, you've got no chance. But on LinkedIn, you've got a significant chance to stand out and appear, you know, 10 foot tall and bulletproof and really attract those right kinds of speaking gigs. Super, organically, lovely, no paid ads. Love that, love that. So here's the argument I can hear coming at me, um, people shouting. They'll probably, they might write postcards, I don't know. But I can hear them saying, look, Maria, I'm super busy. And now you're telling me not only do I have to update and put content out on my LinkedIn profile, but you're now asking me to have a company page and do something on there too. So how do you split your time between the two and how do you also do you, do you have different content on diff, on the different platforms on the different on the page and the profile what do you do because i'm sort of confused now look i get it you know as a small business owner you're wearing you know 50 different hats the accountant the customer service the general manager hr you're doing it all and i understand the time pressures that come with that and the resources you know you've got to put time into these kind of things so what i would say is it really comes down to your goals and what you're trying to achieve and if you can't fit them in the main thing that i'm going to suggest is consistency so if it only means that once a month when you start out you can just put something on there then once a month it is you know, I work with my clients where we're doing company page management, we still only do three times a week, you know, and so we've got a balance between what resources you have and what time you have. And, you know, just make sure that there's a trail there, that if someone stumbles across it organically and in one of the searches in LinkedIn, you know, LinkedIn has really powerful search filters. And if they come across you that way, then we just want to leave a trail that could even be just come over this way and direct them back to your website or direct them back to your personal profile but just make sure that there's something there that gives them a taste of what you are and direct them to where you want them to ideally if you can manage once a week that's great um, but again the consistency is probably more important than let's go really hard like a bullet a gate and then all of a sudden it just falls over oh it's all too hard no one liked or commented what's the point of it all michelle you know if that's the the next question that comes i don't get as many likes and comments as what i do on my personal profile it's a waste of time um and i don't have an argument for that you know you will not get as many likes and comments for the most part on your company page but what we do know is that people are observing they watch what you're doing and when they have that need because you're top of mind, they will reach out to you. And that's the important part. And that is what social selling is. We build up the social proof for that we're the expert, the subject matter expert in our field, so that when someone has, you know, in this case, a speaking gig come up, you're the first person in the first company that they think of. So, um, and we use the company page to promote the individual and vice versa. So you're bouncing them off each other, um, which is another advantage, especially Especially when LinkedIn are restricting the number of connections that you have on your personal profile at the moment. So, you know, they're throttling that so you can't get as much for free. So take advantage of the company page where there's no limits on the number of followers you can build up. Oh, that's interesting. Um, it's interesting as well that you're saying that you use one to promote the other, because I'm trying to think, you know, how would I separate my content? How would it be different from the company mm -hmm. page to the to the profile page? And I, I also know that if you if you publish too often and post too often it's not a good thing to do either on your on your profile page so you could sort of strategically decide that i'll do certain posts on my business page because i want to put the stuff out there and certain posts on your profile that and you're nodding so nobody can see that you're doing that absolutely if they're but it's, <laughs> thank you for <laughs> no, nodding <laughs> I, I was just waiting till you finished because you're absolutely right you know as you're thinking out loud i'm going 
you're you're saying everything that I'm about to say because say you're doing one post, you know, five days a week, you could actually split it up and do two on your company page and three on your personal page or, you know, four and one even depending on your business goals. So you have that opportunity to just bounce them off each other, use one to promote the other. And it's the synergy between the two, which is where you get the real benefits coming out of it. Um, so it's not a one, you know, not company pages in place of profiles or profiles in place of company pages, use the best features out of both. Um, especially if you do a lot of video or a lot of recordings of your speaking gigs, the company page is a great place to store them, which outperforms the personal profile. There's a really amazing tab called video on the company page. Uh, and it's almost like your own mini YouTube channel. So if you're recording the talks and speeches that you're giving and the gigs that you have, then make sure you go and upload them there. It's an easy way that doesn't take a lot of time that you can repurpose content. Now, you asked me before about the kinds of content that goes on a company page. Make it human, make it real. Don't make it corporate stuffy. The more you make it look like an ad, the more we're going to skate on by because no one likes ads. Um, so leave the brochure feel behind, leave the catalog feel behind and make it human. You know, it's snapshots. Um, as I say to people around the office, grab a smartphone, take a photo of anything around you and people will engage with that far more than anything else um, because they want to know what's going on behind the scenes. You know, it's okay to share the setup, getting ready. You know, what's your process behind the scenes of getting ready for your speaking gig? Show us what you do. Um, you know, all of those kind of things allow us to connect on a more human level. Love that. That is genius. The idea of having your own sort of uh, YouTube channel within LinkedIn. I like that. Um, you're giving me so I've got a list of to do's here. It's really good. I love it. And also the other thing when you were talking about your, your uh, company page, it struck me that it's if you're using the right keywords, again, it will come up the company page is going to come up in the Google searches, so that you have got this other opportunity. So, so here's a question for you. Um, I, go, I know I'm going off piece because we prepared some questions in advance, I love but it. I've got so you don't mind. Fantastic, super. <laughs> no. um, here's a question for you. So, so for example, my business and many speakers mm -hmm. have a similar business. I've got my business, I've got my podcast, and I've got a TV show. Do I have just the one company page that covers all three, or should I have a company page for my TV show and a company page for my podcast, or is that going to drive well, me nuts? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it comes down to that thing that we we're speaking about before time and resources. So what you can do is you can actually set up a company page and LinkedIn has what's called showcase pages, which sit underneath. So if you've got the umbrella of the company page, you can set up showcase pages for those other parts of your business. Now, what actually happens with that, that means you then have to create content under those other parts. And so you can see where I'm going with this. You have to invite people to follow those other parts. So the work becomes exponential. So if you're in individual business owner, I would say it's probably not worth the effort. You could have it set up, but you may not go to put a lot of effort into it except have it stand out. Um, you would actually just rotate your content through your company page around those three pillars. So you would go podcast, TV, personal, you, business, and just keep rot rotating around. And, you know, as I said, don't, don't be afraid to repurpose. Pull out some old content that you've got laying around. We've all got a drawer full, the online storage drives, like... <laughs> Who hasn't got, if they say, oh, would you like to upgrade another two terabytes? I'm like, at what point did I become the person that's just hoarding digital content? Um, I am that person. Um, my name's Michelle and I'm a content storageaholic. Uh, so we're all like it. We've got to reuse it. You know, that's where the benefit comes from. A content storageaholic. I like that. I'm, I'm I think that's to... a thing. I'm going to pin, well, I'm going to use it. I'm going to pinch it. I will credit it to you, but I, I love that. I think it's really, and the only problem is, of course, when you go back through some of your content, some of the, the videos are a bit scary, you know, when you haven't quite learned how to focus the camera or the sounds a bit rough or, um, I, I mean, I've got some videos, I've got some hairdos. Oh my goodness. Um, and I'll probably look back in a couple of years time at these videos and think, oh, what was I thinking? But anywho, um, so rotate the content, rotate the content. That's good. Yeah, definitely rotate. So you're going to have a three, probably three or four key themes that you want to share with your audience and you want to reinforce that message. So it might be that you want to reinforce you're a subject matter expert. You might want to reinforce your speaking experience. You might want to share, you know, some of the expertise on actually being a speaker that you've done um, and companies that you've worked with. And you might rotate around those kind of strategies. But yeah, pulling out the old videos. I'm a bit nervous. I'm a bit worried. I've had a couple of home haircuts due to lockdown 
lockdown at the moment. So I might bury these couple uh, <laughs> so they don't come out again. But um, yeah, you know, quite often what I find is the burden of creating from scratch is what stops people from having a company page. Uh, and I just want to change that perception that it has to be all brand new content. It's okay even to share articles that you find that are of interest in your industry and curate interesting information that you can share. Uh, you don't have to really create everything from scratch. It just has to be interesting, um, educating, entertaining, or inspiring. They're the three things that we're looking for because when people log on to any social media, they're the three things that they're looking for, education, entertainment, or inspiration. So yeah, make sure you rotate through those things. Excellent, excellent advice. Fantastic. Education, inspiration, entertainment, enter enter entertainment and inspiration. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. That's it. Yeah, okay. I'm going to be transcribing this. Um. <laughs> <laughs> you are very welcome. Um, you know, because there's there's so many cool things and, you know, there's such a stigma attached to company pages that they have to be boring. They don't work. They don't do this. They don't do that. You know, there's so many people that are anti them. But if you actually just look at it as an opportunity and change that frame of mind of how can it actually help build your opportunities and attract opportunities, that's what we're trying to do with any social selling, which is why we're on LinkedIn. We're creating content. We want to attract opportunities. And it's so much easier than having to do cold calling or lead gen or reaching out all the time and getting rejected that's there's no fun in that um, I'd rather have someone come and reach out to me and say I saw you do this um, can we work together you know that's the kind of thing that I think is the opportunity here excellent so the speakers listening in will be thinking how can a company page help me get more speaking work um, and actually it's a very good question I'm glad they asked how can a company page help speakers get more speaking work <laughs> Well, that's a fair point. I, I yeah. think that's a you know really great question. Um, and I think it becomes around building up your reputation. I think those that get the speaking gigs are probably those that have built up a reputation and that reputation as an individual. And, you know, as I said, you can have two places where you can create that reputation and it can be your personal profile and brand, which should, you know, obviously having an updated profile that reflects you um, and also having the company page that ties in with that. But it's all about, you know, boosting reputation. Everything that you do on here is going to be how can I present myself in a way that I'm the obvious choice for the next speaking gig that someone comes up with in my field? Um, always thinking about what's the content that I could put out there. Every action should be I'm doing this with that end goal in mind. And if it's a speaking opportunity, then we need to make sure that we're attracting the people that are, you know, what are the issues that those people that hand out speaking opportunities, what are the issues that they have? Is it reliability? Is it that people don't turn up? They're not prepared. They don't have the right tech gear. If you were to create some content on your company page and just show behind the scenes and say, this is my amazing speaker. This is my vocal warm up. This is my how I prepare for things. Then when I'm doing my research on you, I can actually go into that company page and go, yeah, this person's a professional. I can trust them. I can, you know, and that has such a big impact in how people select. Brilliant. Love that. You touched upon this earlier and we've, we've personally, both of us like organic and we don't like to pay for stuff. Um, <laughs> Yes. That. yes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> do, do you need to use paid ads, do you think, with a, if you have a company page or can you organically attract? No, I would say I've never used them. I've never recommended them. I would say for most businesses that don't have, um, you know, at least 5,000, I don't know what the equivalent is, but I was going to say 5,000 Australian dollars, probably about 2,000 pounds, um, you know, roughly a month. If you don't have a budget like that, ads are pointless. You are far better off investing that time, creating some content consistently and speaking to the problems that your target audience has. And this applies whether it's speaking gigs you know, there are people out there that are, you know, looking for reliable people that will turn up, that are prepared, that have a really good persona when they're on stage or, in, you know, whether, you know, whereabouts the, the gig is. But essentially what you want to do is just make sure that you speak to that. You know, what are the problems that they're having? Why choose you? Why should I choose you in the next gig? You know, if you make that glaringly obvious, you don't need ads. Um, I I have a LinkedIn learning um, subscription, which basically gives me a little bit of the premium benefits, which I don't even use. It's just that I like the LinkedIn learning courses. I, I think they're amazing and such a bonus. 
But for most people, I would say you don't even need a premium account, you know, let alone pay for ads. You know, most people, if they're paying for ads, want a quick win. You know, if I pay money, I'll automatically get business. Sorry, if it was that easy, we'd all be doing it. <laughs> it's, it's because they don't know how to target, you know, it, and targeting is you know, making sure that your ad goes to the right audience at the right time in the right place. Um, it sounds easy, but it's there's about 250 different filters on LinkedIn ads that you can choose to target your audience. Um, if you don't know who your audience is, then it just becomes really tricky. So yeah, no, keep your money in your pocket, save it, you know, save it for something far more fun than ads. Yeah, send me champagne after you listen to this. That's what you should do. Perfect. Look, LinkedIn had their biggest year ever. You know, last year, everyone jumped onto the platform and they, they've turned over 10 billion um, in revenue and most of which came from new ad spend. And so why I'm going hard on LinkedIn company pages is because I thought about it and said, if I'm LinkedIn, why would I care about company pages? Well, that's, you have to have one to run ads. And so there's going to be more and more features. I've recently been invited by the LinkedIn products team who looks after company pages to join on as a small business advisory council member so I can feed back things that work and don't work. So I know for a fact that they're actually, you know, investing in company pages. And I'm really excited about not where they'll be tomorrow. It's not a short-term game. We're looking at what happens in six months, 12 months, and, you know, a couple of years down the track. So get in early because they take time to build. That's such great advice and fantastic that we know you and we can say, oi, what's going on, Michelle? That's brilliant. So what, what tip can you give listeners that uh, might help them get the most out of company page? You've probably already covered it, but is there, is there, an, is there anything else you can add? My number one tip is get started because they do take time to build. So to be realistic, if you are starting from scratch today, you go away, you're inspired by our conversation and you think, okay, Michelle said, go and get a company page. If you start to do that, it will take around six months for you to build up enough of an audience where you'll get some momentum. That means there's a lot of awkward silences between now and then. So, you know, if we look to this is your plan for the start of next year, this is not a quick win type of situation. But if you start building now, each month LinkedIn will give you 100 invite credits and you can filter who they go to so and can create a really niche community. Because I don't know about you, but I go around, I think it's about 7,000 followers on my personal profile from all kinds of different industries that I've collected along the way. Uh, but my company page are people that are interested in, you know, LinkedIn company pages. And so it's a really narrow audience who are coming to find out about that topic. And it's much easier to sell to that small group than what it is to try and get my message to so many individuals who are probably from a lot of unrelated and have no interest in LinkedIn or LinkedIn pages at all. Uh, and so start building now, use the filters to create a niche community. And this time, you know, at the start of next year, you are going to be in a really strong position. So get started is my number one tip. And that is such great advice about the fact that the people who will follow the page are people who are really engaging with that particular offer that you're able or what you're able to the problem you solve, I suppose, mm. is the word. because I've got two audiences I, for 23 years. I, I don't know if you know, but I used to run um, speaker bureaus. So I've got oh, a lot of my half of my audience, uh, in fact, probably three quarters, actually, are bookers and clients and, and former prospects. And then now I've moved into working with speakers and I'm talking, my audience is sort of quite mixed, really. Yes. And, it, and, and again, I, I've got something like nine and a half thousand followers. And I don't know how, who the speakers are within there that now I am talking to. So that's such a good idea. I'm going to, I, have, I am going to get onto this, actually. Because this really I had good. something very similar happen to a lady the other day who came to me. She's an author, works with authors. Um, and she said to me, Michelle, I've got everything going through my company page. You know, uh, Sorry, through my personal profile. Why do I need a company page? And so when we got talking, she had the same thing. It actually, we established her business was split in two. So she had two very different audiences. And the other audience was, you know, someone, people that she works with that for an overflow type of situation where they can't keep up, other authors, you know, that can't keep up with the workload, she would take on. And we realized that she was better off to keep, you know, one part of her audience on her personal profile and work with them. So they would potentially new clients that would work with her directly. And the other one, the company pages, where she could actually set it up for 
the overflow, you know, and attracting work down that space because they're two different audiences and the content that you put out doesn't resonate with one or the other because it's like literally going onto Netflix. I want to watch, you know, a rom-com and you're playing me a horror movie, you know, and the, when they don't line up, that's when people switch off and you lose attention. Um, and so it doesn't work for either side, you know, because they're like, why are you teaching me this? Why are you showing me that? I don't want to see that. And the last thing we want them to do is press the little three dots and say unfollow, um, you know, because then that signals to LinkedIn that your content's not that great. Um, and then we want to make sure that that doesn't happen. So having the right audience to content match is, you know, super important. Wow. Yes, of course. I hadn't thought about that. If they unfollow, it's a signal to the algorithm, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. So, Michelle, tell us a little bit about the services that you offer to people with regards to company pages. How much, how far do you go? What do you do for people in case they want your help and decide they don't want to do it for themselves? Yeah, look, I, I start from everywhere. I start from audits of what they're currently doing and creating strategies so that they can handle it themselves. I start at that end. We then do training of people again if they want to be self-sufficient and handle it internally. And then we have the third step, which is for those that just recognize they do not have the time or the resources and they will never get to their LinkedIn company page. They don't like writing. They don't want to even know about it. Uh, I have a company page management server so where we will write the content, do the strategy and manage the online community and so we've got everyone in that spectrum that I look after so uh, but it's you know often small and medium businesses that are looking to try and compete and get an edge in a world where they don't want to pay you know exorbitant amounts for ads may not have the resources to be able to put on extra sales people to go out and do business development because that's a pretty expensive way but they still know that their ideal audience is on LinkedIn so if your ideal client or audience is a professional or a business then LinkedIn is the place to be so yeah I help them with that perfect and how do they connect with you how do they find you Michelle this will be a surprise on LinkedIn uh, so if they I know you didn't see that one coming, did you? Uh, so yeah, if you come and find me, I'm Michelle J. Raymond on LinkedIn. And that's another tip that I would give to people. If you have a common name like mine, feel free to add in your middle initial to make you stand out. Uh, one of the problems I had is I would come on to things like this and say, it's Michelle Raymond. And there's thousands of us. Um, and they're really cool. I've met some of them. Uh, but yeah, so Michelle J. Raymond on LinkedIn or come and find my company page, which is Good Trading Co. Um, and that's where I give away lots of free company pages tips and tricks and let you know about all the latest features that are coming to company pages to help you you know build your reputation and your revenue more importantly absolutely we're all about the revenue brilliant michelle thank you so much it's been brilliant fun um, i hope you've enjoyed it too and um th thank you so much for your time it's been an absolute pleasure thank you so much Super. Well, listen, I've learned a lot today. And if you've enjoyed listening to the Speaking Business Podcast, please leave a rating on Apple Podcasts. You can keep up with future episodes on the Speaking Business Academy website, which is speakingbusinessacademy.com, or your favorite podcast app. And you can reach out to Michelle, you know, on LinkedIn. So bye-bye for now, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.